Howdy folks, uh, today I'm de-rusting a top of a very old craftsman saw. It, there's a lot of stuff on the internet about this sort of thing and I tried all the all the stuff on YouTube that I saw, WD-40s and, and chemicals and scrubbies and all that good stuff. Uh, even a little bit of sanding. This thing was just, well you can see it was just so bad that I've already sanded the top and look what I've got. I mean I've still got a rusty saw at least every time I touch it on this side. <laughs> I started polishing it on this side and cleaning it up, but I guess there's no endorsement, no support, nobody's paying me to tell you about this, but I went over to Home Depot, yeah, big box store, and I bought one of these. And I'm gonna see if I can give you a close up without, focus, focus, one of these, and tried it, and that's what you're seeing here. Uh, now, <laughs> also, demolished it really quickly. So for what these things cost, let's see if I can get this one off. I sort of tore this one down pretty quick, but I've also got a square box fan blowing on me. So all the rust is blowing straight outside into the, uh, into the uh, driveway. So no biggie. Uh, to get these off, because after you get them on, they, they screw on to your, well in this case I'm using a quarter cable, but I guess they would pretty much screw on to most of your uh, angle grinders, so it shouldn't be a problem. But the it's just threaded on, so you just screw it on tight, it stays tight while you you know sit there and you know do your thing. When you go to get it off, I uh, took the key from the angle grinder and just put it into these fins like this to try to break it loose, because otherwise, uh, there wasn't anything in the instructions here about how to how do you remove it. So let's open the package. Like I said this is a this is a new one. Seeing I've already <clears throat> pretty much destroyed the old one. The cost, let's see, cost wise, I think it was around ten dollars something like that. But what a great item! I mean, it just tears rust apart. You can see it's really deep compared to uh, this is what I had. <laughs> not too much left. Made in England, not China, by the way. Just that might excite you. And uh, it's a real aggressive, you know, kind of padding. But uh, in this case here, for this saw, aggressive is not gonna hurt anything. So I'm gonna see if we can get some of this rust out of here. <clears throat> and put this uh, out of here. This is, uh, it, rather than wearing ear muffs and masks and everything else, I was actually gonna put this outside. This table so heavy to roll around right now, I really don't want to get into trying to get it out of there and get it back in, even though I do have it on wheels now. So I got a big box fan running, so you're probably hearing quite a bit of jet engine noise, but look at this. Huh? And always wear safety glasses when you're doing something like this. Possibly earplugs if you're a younger fellow and you want to keep your hearing. It might, it's, uh, it's not bad, it's not real loud, but uh, you can see a real quick pass even with that and it's taking that rust, just blasting it out of there. So I'm really liking what's going on here. I'm gonna have a lot of fun trying to get rust out of here and stuff. I may have to actually hand brush. I hand brushed this with a stainless steel wire brush and I got this cleaned up. But this side here, I haven't even started yet, and you can see, like, I've got quite a bit of quite a bit of rust. There's some pinning over here that'll never come out. The rust went too deep, and you know it is what it is. But that's fine. Uh, it's just a saw for me to play with. So hey, you know, I'm a happy camper. Okay, we're gonna try this, and I don't know. Yeah, it might work, but uh, it's gonna fling crap around, so let's have a look. Ah, let's see. There we go. Okay, are you ready for this? I'm gonna try to run this through here and see if we can get this well cleaned out with this uh, magic, uh, magic piece we got going on here. This is going to be a little tough, so we'll see. Okay. 
Looking good, muchachos. Now, I gotta put my fan on. <clears throat> Blow all this nasty rust out. Wow. There we go. Uh, one. Whew, wow. One real quick word though. Uh, when you hit an edge or a metal edge like that, those little pieces of plastic that are on the uh, blade of that thing fly off. And if they hit you, it hurts. Like, it stings. Not bad. Uh, I messed up my paint job here a little bit, but that's uh, looking good. Be very careful, and yeah, safety glass is a must. Probably should have an air mask if you don't have a, I've got a really well ventilated system here, it's blowing all that rust out, so. Well, just put on an angle grinder, and man, you just knock that rust off in a hurry. We're gonna put some wax on top of that to keep it in good shape from here on out. And I've gotta do a little bit across the front and stuff, and probably, uh, we won't have you sit through that, but it'll be a stainless steel brush by hand, chick -chick -chick, just like, uh, you know, yeah. It's, uh, it's going to take some time to get all that brush down, so I won't keep you on that one. But, uh, wow, what a great little product. I see $9.99, $10, whatever, but, uh, and they have two styles. This one here goes in a drill. I haven't even tried it yet. But uh, I bought both just in case because I thought this might be handy too for some uh, edges and stuff like that. But when this stuff flings off, you don't want to be anywhere near that. It'll, it'll hurt you. <laughs> the uh, other thing I'm going to do is, of course, is take this back down. It was black originally, and I don't have uh, you know bright red paint or something laying around. I think I'm going to do the black over again. But it really is a, a thing now where uh, the manufacturers now put these out with that red paint on them. And also, I'm thinking about making one, uh, making one up out of wood that will have a little blade back here that'll be our curfing knife to help prevent the possibility of kickback, even though, like I've said, I, I have never experienced kickback myself. But it, you know, yeah, it happens. I've heard it happens. I've seen it on videos even. I've just never had it happen to me, but I've always made sure my lumber is very much controlled when it's going through that saw so that nothing can get out, uh, get loose and come stupid out of there. Uh, we could talk about kickback for a whole program and I don't think we can cover and make everybody happy because what causes kickback is, to me, is usually it's the wood to the fence, it getting pinched against the blade, the blade grabs the wood finally and you know throws it out of there in your face but I've always tried to maintain not to let anything like that happen. I don't know, uh, over 50 years of using these saws and yeah, still haven't had it happen, but I don't want it to happen either, so knock on metal or something, right? Cool, yeah, weird. Yeah, anyway. So this week uh, I wanted to do that, and the other thing I wanted to do was I wanted to adopt that little wheel. Uh, I've got to get some parts for that so I can figure out how I'm going to build an adopter. So I was going to film that today and I'll show you what I've got, what I'm working on. So you may, you know, if you have a similar situation with an old saw like this and you want to go to a wheel, there's, there's possibilities. There of course is the wheel and it has like a half, well it's not even a half moon. But it's a flat spotted area where the screw would go, would possibly go through or something, but this is the pattern. So uh, what I'm gonna do is probably cut a half inch bolt down, just an old one that's laying around here in the shop, and put that flat spot on here, and also have to drill through, and I'll be doing this on my lathe. This is gonna be some technical work that uh, not everybody with a wood shop or any kind of shop really has a, a lathe sitting around. I just happen to have that little Harbor Freight lathe and I use it for projects just like this. The other end of it for the adopter, I got some 3 8 black pipe from uh, Lowe's or Home Depot, don't know which one it was. Just a little piece, you know, a couple inches long, a couple dollars. I'm gonna put this again, in, uh, cut this off and take it to where I'm gonna drill a tap and die 
hole, probably quarter 20 or maybe quarter 28 if I get really sophisticated and put a nice little set screw or a screw of some sort in here so I can lock to the original shaft that's on there and then weld the other end to the half inch piece. So we'll be coming a couple of inches out. That'll put the wheel probably a good, oh, a good two or three inches uh, further out. So I'm not sure how all this is gonna work and I was gonna film it, like I said today, and just go through the steps with you guys. I'm not so sure it's a good idea, but I did wanna show you how, to, how we're gonna get the rust off of here. And you can see almost all the rust is gone right now. I've got a little bit of edging and finish work to sand up, which I will be, yeah, you guessed it. I will be using my favorite little sander. So to sand these uh, edges, We'll be using this one to just do a final sort of finish sand on this with uh, I'm going to be using like an 80 grit to start with and then drop down to 120 and then maybe a 2 200 240 somewhere in that range to finish the top of the saw right before we throw some nice wax on it to kind of seal it back up also this saw has the cheaper uh, punched metal plates for the wings which uh, for me was that's fine because the cast iron wings are really cool, but that just adds more weight to the saw. And this saw is already, I'll admit, too heavy. It's just, it's just too heavy. So I'm going to uh, get these edges and clean all this rust up with uh, my other uh, sander. And then we'll throw some paint. And uh, when we come back, I'll, I'll let you have a look at it, see how it's all going. Yeah. Wow, rather than bore you with me sitting here sanding and sanding and sanding away, did all the sanding, uh, did a black lacquer, uh, hard paint job on everything here, and uh, finished up, taped everything, painted her. I think she looks terrific. And I, I can touch her now, and I'm not getting rust on my hands, so I'm liking that already. <laughs> she was pretty nasty when she came in the door. But uh, she's looking great now and uh, runs really good, really smooth. The only other thing I guess I could check is maybe the uh, uh, check the carbon brushes on the motor and just make sure there's lots of life left in there because the motor windings and everything else look like they were in good shape. Just need a little, you know, good old cleaning up. And sorry about the wheel, couldn't get it on this week. But hey, please like, like, and like, and share and subscribe. <laughs> The reason I mention it is the algorithm right now on YouTube is really watching that like thing over anything else. But I still need, I, we need lots of subscribers. That, there's nothing wrong with that. If you can share on social medias, whatever platforms, hey, you're more than welcome to. You know it. And thank you again for tuning in this week and uh, seeing what I'm up to here in the garage at Coffee and Tools. Over and out.